Hi everybody, this is Kefren, your favorite French Canadian. Today I'm going to show you how to boost your FPS in 7 Days to Die, the 2.0 version. A lot of change if you compare with my guide from the previous year. I'm going to start by optimizing Windows and after that we're going to look at your Radeon and Nvidia setting. And at the end we're going to go inside of the game. So now for Windows, we're going to start by writing settings. And we're going to go to the settings of Windows 11. We're gonna start by gaming over there. So the first one is game bar. This one I really recommend to deactivate it. It's causing issue and also you're losing some FPS with it. Except if you have a Ryzen uh, CPU, the 7900X 3D or the 7950X 3D, they're using uh, the game bar uh, to prioritize your CCD when you're playing video games. So super important to use that if you have those processor. If you have any other processor, just deactivate it. After that, we're going to go to graphic. We're going to change default graphic setting over there. Make sure that your hardware accelerated GPU scheduling is at on. Super important to do that. We're going to go to gaming again. Capture, capture. Make sure that everything is deactivated like this. So uh, you want to save all your resources. And the last one is game mode. Now game mode, honestly, is really, really good. Back then with Windows 10, it was a bit sketchy and a lot of like stuttering issue. But now you really need to using it uh, to make sure that all your resources are pri prioritizing your video games. Another thing that I recommend, we're going to go to system is your power. Uh, back then, uh, we were recommending to use the best performance, but now, honestly, just use balance. You will have better boost clock, longer boost clock. Uh, I did a couple of benchmark balance versus per best performance, and honestly, I'm getting better result with balance. So super important to do that. Another thing I want to mention is some recommendations. So make sure that your uh, XMP profile is activated if you have it on your BIOS. Super important. Make sure that you download the latest uh, chipset driver for your CPU if you have an AMD or Intel. Also, make sure that you update your BIOS to make sure that you have all the latest updates from your uh, CPU or your uh, uh, motherboard provider. Make sure that you have your Windows update up to date. And the last one is also make sure that you have the latest driver from your GPU. So if you have an NVIDIA card, Radeon or Intel, super important. They always push new update and they optimize a lot of stuff in it. So now for NVIDIA, so if you go to your seven days to die in program setting, uh, you don't, you still don't have the compatibility with the DLSS override. So you can't force the DLSS for with your NVIDIA app. But still, in global setting, a couple of settings that I normally recommend, the low latency mode, make sure this one is at on. Max frame rate, I'm locking my FPS at 237 because I'm using the G-Sync and I have a 240 Hertz monitor. So for an example, if I'm doing, a, uh, I'm playing a game and I'm doing 241 FPS, I'm going to lose my G-Sync. So normally, just lock your FPS 3 FPS less than your maximum refresh rate if you want to make sure that you always use your G-Sync. Another parameter that can help, it's your shader ca cache size. If you install a lot of different games, this one can help because by default, uh, I think NVIDIA give uh, 5 gig by uh, memory. Um, but um, if you have space on your drive, go with 10 or 100 if you install a lot of game. If you have some shader problem because you always to recompile your game, uh, this one can help a lot. So definitely use that one. Now we're gonna go to settings. So the first one is G-Sync. I'm using it at on on my full screen or window. So depending how I'm playing my game. On my main monitor, make sure also in your monitor that your G-Sync is activated. After that, resolution, make sure that you're playing native and also make sure that you're using the uh, proper refresh rate. I know a lot of people is buying high refresh rate uh, monitor, but they're playing at 60 because Windows uh, decide to default at 60. So super important to change that. And uh, in this parameter, in the color, if you have a, a, a new monitor that's compatible with HDR and stuff like that, just look at your spec, but make sure that you're using 10-bit if it's compatible and also full for your dynamic range. And for a game like 7 Days to Guide, the game is really gray. So in digital vibrance, normally I'm putting at 55. Uh, by default, it's 50, so your color will be a little bit better. Uh, after that, this is pretty much it. Uh, one parameter that uh, I like to use in performance, power maximum, I just put at 133. So this is the maximum. It will give you more uh, wattage to your card. And normally it will help to have a better boost clock and also longer boost clock. And um, 
it, it, it's, it will be the algorithm from uh, NVIDIA that will decide the, uh, the, the, the process and how much time they're going to boost clutch at max and stuff like that. So also you need good thermal on your card, good thermal on your computers. Uh, normally it can help 5 to 8% boost in your FPS. It's not a, an overclocking technically. Uh, so it's just like you provide more power to your card if, uh, you, if it needed. So this is pretty much it. Now let's go with the Radian settings. So now for Radiant card, we're gonna go to settings, display first. Make sure that you're using your free sync. If you have a monitor compatible with it, you're gonna make sure that you're gonna synchronize your GPU with your monitor. So really important to use that. After that, we're gonna go to gaming in the graphics section. Make sure that you're using the custom profile. So don't use those presets over there. Make sure that you're selecting your GPU. In my case, it's a 9070 XT. Don't use your integrate GPU. It can be tricky if you're playing on a laptop or even a desktop like me that has an integrate GPU. After that, the first one that you will need to look at is your uh, FSR 4 that you can force in some game that it's uh, using FSR 3. This one, uh, it's not necessarily everybody will have it. It really depends if your card is compatible with it. So definitely enable it if you have it. Also, I want to mention if you're playing in a game that uh, doesn't have FSR, doesn't have frame generation and you're struggling with your FPS, fluid motion frame can be a nice uh, option over there. You activate it, you're going to get like 30 to 30% boost. It will add input lag, so don't use that if you're playing a competitive game, but this one can help with an uh, older game. Uh, don't use anti-lag one. This one is not good. Don't use a radiant boost. Radiant chill, I really recommend to use it. And I will explain you why. So for an example, in my case right now, I have a 170 Hertz monitor. And to stay in your free sync range, you need to be, uh, you need to produce less than 170 FPS. So my recommendation is take your amount of Hertz on your uh, monitor. In my case, it's 170. Do minus three and lock your FPS at 167. You can do the same thing if you have a 240 Hertz monitor. Go with 30, uh, 237. Uh, so you're always going to make sure that you stay in your free sync range. It's better for uh, the fluidity of your image. And also, really important, if you want less input lag, you need to make sure that your GPU is not at 100% utilization. So uh, 98, 97, something like that. So sometimes it's good to just lock your FPS. Again, it depends on the game. Maybe in some game, 160 F 67 FPS will be 100% uh, utilization for me. So you can go maybe a little bit lower. You can also do it per game. Right now in the graphics section, I'm doing it for all my games on my computer. But sometimes, I don't know, you're playing the new Assassin's Creed. Just go to Assassin's Creed and you can lock your FPS over there if you want. So really important to do that for your uh, utilization, but also to make sure that you're staying in your free sync range. Another thing that I want to mention, image sharpening too can be nice if you don't add FSR in game or a sharpness a slider. Uh, so if you're playing an old game or a game that just have like TAA and the game is very blurry, activate this and move your slider between something 60 to 70% depending on your preference. And it will really help to have a better image quality. Last thing that I want to mention, if you have some random stuttering and you don't know why, this option at the end can be really nice. It resets your shader cache, so you just perform a reset. And after that, when you will reopen your game, it will just rebuild your shader. Sometimes it can take time, so don't go too crazy if your game is lagging, but uh, it can help. I, I saw a lot of person uh, having this issue with Call of Duty, so this one can really help you. So this is pretty much it, guys. Make sure that you have the latest uh, version of your driver, and I also have a dedicated drive on uh, how to overclock your GPU. For me, it gives me 12% boost in my FPS without too much effort, so you can definitely look at my guide. So now let's go in the game. All right, quick pause. Uh, this part of the video is an ad for Instant Gaming. If you like discovering what's hot right now, check out the trending section on their website. It's full of game that everyone is playing at the moment, and most of them are way cheaper than other platforms. You will find games for PC, Xbox, PlayStation, and even the Switch. Everything comes from an official reseller, so no weird marketplace issue. They got a 24-7 customer support, a strong trust pilot score, and the site is super easy to browse. The link's in the description, go take a look, and let's get back into the video. So now the parameters. So first of all, your resolution, make sure that you're playing native over there. 
Uh, for the full screen, make sure it's that on. This is the best parameter for, to have the most of your FPS and less input lag. Now, uh, if you compare with my previous guide, we have a dedicated section with the upscaler technique. For sure, if you have an NVIDIA card, go with DLSS. This is the best one. Um, I recommend to go with quality or balance. If you're playing 1440p or 4K, balance can be uh, good. You can expect 15 to 18% uh, boost in your FPS. Quality is 10% boost. Uh, this is the parameter that I like to use. Um, if you're playing 1080p, for sure, go with quality. If you have a Radeon car or your NVIDIA car doesn't have uh, the LSS, go with FSR. Pretty much the same concept. Go with quality. You can expect 8 to 10% boost or go with balance 15 to 17, something like that. Uh, and again, if you're playing 1080p, go with quality. For the V-Sync, I deactivated it. Uh, I'm using G-Sync. So if you have G-Sync or FreeSync, definitely go with that. V-Sync will add a little bit of input lag, but you know, you're know you not playing Counter-Strike or Valorant. So it's not that bad. If you have too much tearing, you can definitely use that. Field of view, if you add more field of view, you will lose some FPS. So if you uh, have some issue to run the game, start maybe at 60, do some testing. And after that, increase a little bit. Me, I like to play at 73. In the quality section, we're going to go with custom. Normal anti-aliasing will be grayed out because now... We're using an upscaling technique. You have the sharpening slider. So if the game is too blurry, go higher. If it looks too much like an Instagram filter, go lower. Texture quality and filter really depend on the amount of VRAM on your video card. If you have 8 gig and more, go full ultra. 6 gig off high, 4 gig quarter medium, less than 4 gig, go 8 and low. Let's go back like this. Reflection quality, reflection shadow, shadow distance, shadow quality. Honestly, those one off, off, low and off, it will provide you 20% boost. So this is huge. This is a big section that definitely will help you a lot. Again, it really depends on your goal, what type of computer that you have. If you want a little bit more reflect shadow and stuff like that, you can definitely activate it. But this will give you a lot of performance. Particle at playing at 20, uh, if you go iron and that, it will be a, a kind of a, a big load on your CPU, on it, honestly. So don't go too crazy with this one. 20 is a good balance, not a huge impact, but after that, you will feel it. View distance, I recommend to go with medium. It's a good balance. Low is too uh, narrow in front of you, so definitely go with medium. And LOD distance, start at 25%. Don't go too crazy with this one. For like each 10% in the slider, you're going to lose like 3 to 4% in your FPS. So 25% with medium over there. It's a good balance for the game. After that, in this section, you can uh, put some more um, parameters. For example, Terran quality you can definitely run medium. After medium, you, you're going to like lose 2 to 3% for each bracket. But when you go at low and lowest, it's like 1%. So medium is kind of like worth in this game. Water quality, high. Grass distance, again, go with medium. Object quality, medium. This is a good balance to have a proper amount of FPS and also a good image quality. Occlusion, I recommend to go with off. You can expect 4% boost in your FPS and all those settings over there go off every, for everything. If you feel that your game looks too flat, activate the ambient occlusion over there, but you're going to lose 4% in your FPS. The one parameter that will destroy that your FPS, and a lot of people don't know about it, is the dynamic mesh option. Make sure this option over there is at no super important. Can be a difference between 15% of your FPS or not. So definitely deactivate it. So this is pretty much it, guys, for my 7 Days to Die uh, guide, uh, the version 2.0 in 2025. If you have any questions, just comment in the YouTube section. Post me your rig, CPU, GPU, and RAM. I will try to help you the best that I can. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel.